What's up guys, this is Chris from Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna be talking about some of my favorite guns. Specifically, some of my favorite carry guns. Now a lot of you guys have been asking for this video for a long time. A few years ago I put my uh, top 10 favorite pistols on the channel. It's a big video, if you guys wanna check that out, be my guest, but there was a lot of competition pistols on that, and people wanted to see a more home defense, but specifically concealed carry oriented video. So I gathered all of my favorite carry guns together, at least uh, a man manageable amount to talk about because I do have a lot of pistols and I've carried a lot of pistols over the years. Uh, I got together some of the guns that I thought I just couldn't live without, some of the guns I've carried the most over the years. And we were gonna do a top five, but it ended up being seven, and seven that I think are really, really good. A couple of different actions in there, but most of them are striker fired. They're very popular as well, and I think this is kind of a good video to kind of get into concealed carry for a lot of people, or maybe rethink your concealed carry. Over the years, I've had my concealed carry for a long, time and I uh, carry a lot because I feel like if you're a responsible citizen and you are able to help people maybe you should I like a lot of different variations of firearms and I'm gonna give you kind of my perspective on them I'm gonna rate them based on what I would use them for like what different carry situations but basically I'm gonna rate them on reliability accuracy durability all the standard categories that I normally rate guns on uh, but all of these keep in mind are exceptionally accurate and reliable or they wouldn't be on this list we're gonna add a couple other things as well, but we might as well get right into it. Before we do that though, I do wanna mention my Patreon supporters, thank you guys very much. You sponsor every video and I can't thank you enough. If you're interested in helping the channel, that's the best way to do it. Go down to the link in the description. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa, it's the YSS. I'd really appreciate if you go down there and click that link and donate to those kids. And finally, if you wanna see future videos like this, please go down there and subscribe and like the video, share it, throw a comment down there as well for the algorithm. Now, let's get into this with the first one, and it is the least proven gun on the list. And that's not doesn't mean it's the worst, it just means it's the one I started carrying the most recently, and that's going to be the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. Now, this could, within a year or two, be the absolute number one. I really, really enjoy this gun right now. I have the Pro Series uh, coming soon. What I like the most about it is that of all the micro double stack subcompacts, it shoots the best for me. It's the most accurate, it's the fastest. It really does shoot really quickly for me, really accurate, I feel very confident with it. It's a very small, super lightweight gun, under 20 ounces, three inch barrel, striker fire design. It has a pretty exceptional flat face trigger right out of the box, steel sights, uh, pretty good texture on the slide in case you need to run it fast, and really good texture on the grip so you can keep that recoil control. Control. Now it's got a bit thicker grip than some of the other Micro 9s like the 365 or maybe the Hellcat, which is why I like it, I'm a bigger guy. And it's slightly larger than the 365, but it shoots a lot better in my personal opinion. Very, very reliable, we have a thousand round review of it. Exceptionally reliable with all ammunition types and I can hit it 100 yards with it very, very easy. One of the smallest and lightest guns that I feel super confident in carrying. Now, the reason why it's at number seven, again, is because I've only had it for about a year, and a lot of these guns have seen a lot more holster time and a lot more range time than this particular gun has. But I'm sure, considering it has the track record of the original Shield, the original Micro 9, I'm sure it's gonna do great, and I know it'll eventually bump itself up this list. Now, the Shield Plus comes in around the five to $600 mark, and the Pro Series is gonna be a little bit more than that. Right, they do have optics ready models and a whole bunch of different models available, so you can pick from the four inch, the three inch, or any other of the Shield Plus models you're looking at. But I just wanted to show you this bad mo because it is certainly one of my favorite guns. Now, in at number six, another gun that I was gonna leave off, but I thought I'd throw it on there, is my little bitty 380 here. This is my Glock 42. You can see how much lint and shit is on it. Uh, this gun has been carried a lot. It has a custom slide that I, I don't even remember who did anymore. It's got uh, night sights on it, HD night sights. It's got my uh, silly stippling on it, and then it's got some Talon grip, rubber grip tape to cover up the other shitty uh, stippling job that I did years ago. This gun is very old. It's got the stock trigger in it. And I used to carry this gun a lot, especially for situations where I wanted something really small. Five, 10 years ago, you didn't really have the opportunity to get something like a Micro 9 with like 10 or 15 rounds. The, the Shield has a 10 round magazine capacity and a 13 round magazine capacity if you're interested. Uh, but the uh, the Glock 42 here absolutely does not. With the stock magazine, it is only six, ounce, or six rounds of 380. And with the one I carry, it's about seven rounds of 380 with one of the pipes. So eight rounds of 380, doesn't seem like much, but I can shoot this so well because I've carried it so long 
I feel very comfortable. I can hit it 100 yards, I can shoot extremely quickly. I can do, you know, sub three second build drills with this thing. It is very, very controllable. And at the end of the day, it is a gun. I've even shot, what did I, shot a coyote with this, which is kind of funny. Now the Glock 42 comes in between the four and $600 mark. Uh, it's very similar in price to the Shield Plus. You get a little bit less gun for it, but it's very tiny and easy to carry. Uh, there are different versions of this gun, different colors, turquoise, all that fun stuff. My wife actually has a turquoise version of this gun. So I like this a lot. It's my most trusted 380 because again, it is big enough for me to hold really well and shoot while still being super, super small and lightweight. You're talking about like a, a sub 15 ounce gun that you literally don't even know is there. I ended up taking this to Texas last year and I was one of the only influencers there that even had a gun, that was pretty funny. Uh, and everybody was kind of checking this gun out because it's a weird gun. I mean, who customizes a Glock 42? But I like it so much I figured I'd trick it out and it's still one of my favorite carry guns. Now we're getting to the top five here with some of the real contenders, and I'm gonna start things off with probably another Glock. Let's go with my oldest carry gun, uh, the Glock 19. Now this gun is still on me very, very frequently, and it is carried often, especially when I'm out in the fields or I'm doing stuff at night, because it is light compatible. Uh, I carry it in this holster. I'm not exactly sure what holster this is, uh, but it is an appendix uh, light mounted holster. It has the same sights as the Glock 42 on it. The Glock 19 is a four inch striker fired pistol with a 15 round magazine capacity, and it is the highest sold handgun of all time, which is another benefit of it, really. Not only is it lightweight, accurate, stupid, reliable, uh, magazine compatibility with with uh, police officers, all kinds of other stuff. If you needed to switch a mag with somebody, there's a fair chance they have a Glock. Uh, parts compatibility, I've got a, I think it's a Zavari Precision uh, slide on it now in multi-cam black, a TLR7A, and then I have some, uh, uh, some of my own silicone carbided texture there uh, that I think is pretty neat. It's not nearly as aggressive as some of the other silicone carbide because I put it on myself. I got this on Amazon, threw it on with some epoxy. So uh, it's just a little bit more aggressive than let's say rubber grip tape, but it's got a really firm purchase on the gun and I can shoot this thing really, really well. Plus the magazine capacity, the overall track looker durability reliability makes me feel very comfy and cozy with this guy. Now the Glock 19, this is a Gen 5. There's Gen 3s, Gen 4s, Gen 5s. All of them are good. The Gen 3s you can get for like 300 to 400 bucks. Absolutely best buy on the table by far. Uh, Gen 4s are pretty good. I really like the Gen 5s because of the new upgraded uh, system that it has. It has a new upgraded marksman barrel and trigger. Makes it a little bit more accurate than the previous models. And the Gen 4 and Gen 5 do come with the backstrap series, which I like a lot, but all of them work well. Somewhere between three and $600, you're getting a lot of gun for your money and for sure the best WROL gun on the table. If the world ends, you want a Glock 19. In at number four, we have a gun I carry an awful lot, especially lately. This is gonna be the SIG P365. Now I know if you're familiar with the channel, you might be surprised about that uh, because of the recent SIG video that I put out. Uh, just because I don't like the 320 doesn't mean I don't like SIG products. I absolutely love the MPX, I love the MCX, and I love the P365 series, including the Spectre. Uh, the 365 is the smallest and lightest of the micro nine millimeter pistols. Uh, you're looking at a magazine capacity of 10 rounds. It is the smallest gun I'm really, really comfortable with a nine millimeter because it still shoots really well, still accurate to 100 yards, good trigger, uh, three inch barrel, and overall it is very small, very lightweight, and still giving you 10 uh, rounds of nine millimeter in the gun. Gives you a lot of capability for an extremely small package. In all the situations where I used to carry this, I now carry this. Because you can see, instead of eight rounds of 380, I now get 10 rounds of nine millimeter, and they're actually, almost exactly the same size, which is crazy. Gotta love modern technology, right? And that's the real selling point of the 365. It was the first subcompact Micro 9, and it set the standard for things like the Shield Plus, things like the Hellcat, and I think it's still ahead today, just because of its uh, size to weight ratio versus its capacity versus its capability. So overall, I think the 365 could be the best carry gun on the market for most people. However, I've got a couple that if I was gonna walk out the door right now, I would take over it, but that's just gonna be personal preference. All of these guns are good. Now the SIG P365 comes in at around the five to six hundred dollar mark, depending on what model you get. The SIG Spectre is going to be around a thousand. Uh, that comes with a comp series, the optics mount, and all that. It basically goes anywhere from five hundred to a thousand, depending on what feature set that you get. Now, at number three here, we have a Phase Blaster. 
the fastest gun on the table by far, and the gun I carry when I'm feeling uncomfortable. Uh, so this is a gun I like to carry in the winter, or I like to carry in what I would consider higher stress situations. Uh, it has 16 rounds of nine millimeter, but you can upgrade it with uh, 24, 27, or even higher than that magazines, because it does uh, it is capable of taking the standard staccato mag. This is a single action only 2011 design, so think double stack 1911, uh, with a grip, a frame, and then a steel slide, aluminum frame, and a polymer grip. I've had this done over by Darkside Precision and Vulcan Machine Works in order to get the exact gun I want. It's riding an RMR CC on there, which I can hit at like 150 yards with this little guy, uh, and it has the dark side uh, texture on it because I like a lot of texture. Now, it does have a grip safety and a manual safety, and most people don't like that. That's cool. I am a country boy. I grew up on 1911, so it's not a problem for me. I built the safety into my battery of arms, and it works very well for me. This is an extremely fast, extremely accurate carry gun. Arguably the fastest and most accurate production four inch pistol on the market. You don't sacrifice any size, you don't sacrifice any weight coming at around 27, 28 ounces. Same size as the Glock 19 with a significantly uh, higher uh, fire rate in my opinion and a lot more accuracy. Now the downside of the Staccato is it's gonna be around $2,000. So overall it's gonna be very expensive. Kitted out as you see here, it's like $3,000. So it does have a lot of performance but it is a high price gun as well. And I know that's well out of some people's price range but if you're interested in the fastest, most accurate gun on the table, this is certainly it. Now it is a little bit bulky, especially in the grip and especially in the manual safety. And every once in a while, this gun is a little bit more uncomfortable than some of the other ones on the table. But I will sacrifice a little bit of comfort for the capability that comes with the Staccato C2. Excellent gun, one of the best 2011s for the money. And wow, is it impressive. All right, now in at number two, this was a very difficult choice for me to try to pick which one of these I would walk out of the house with. And I think, honestly, it's kind of a tie because it really depends on the situation. Uh, one is a little bit bigger than the other, and that's the only reason I'm going to go with the CZ P07 at number two. Now, the reality is that this was a world end situation. Remember when I said that you should take the Glock 19? Well, this is what I would take. This is my most trusted gun, my most reliable gun, and honestly, I probably should have put it at number one. <laughs> But uh, overall, the CZ P07 is one of my favorite, if not my top three favorite pistols of all time. I probably have the most rounds out of any gun in this gun, except for my competition pistols. Out of all the home defense or uh, concealed carry guns, this gun has the most, and you could tell. Uh, it has very few uh, upgrades to it. It does have an upgraded trigger from CZ Custom. Uh, I didn't put that in, they did it for me just because I wanted it done right. I did the first one and I kind of fucked it up. But uh, it has fiber optic front sight with a blacked out rear. It used to have tritium sights on it, and I'm actually thinking about going to a red dot at some point. And I can't remember if I upgraded the hammer or not. I can't remember if they upgraded the hammer with the trigger system. And then we have some talon grip on there uh, that it looks terrible because it's been on there for a really, really long time. And then obviously all my Cerakote job and everything is worn off with heat and, sh and holster wear and all that stuff. The reality is though, uh, this is one of the most reliable, if not the most reliable gun that I own. I trust this gun to go off every single time with no problem with all ammunition types, and that's really saying a lot. Out of all the guns I've tested over the years, this thing is an absolute monster. Uh, it's a double single action gun, so it's really safe for appendix carry. Uh, you have that long trigger pull, the action will cycle, and then you have a very short light uh, reset and a very short light uh, trigger pull, making it very accurate at distance. Four inch barrel, 28 overall, 28 ounce overall weight, making it the same size as the Glock 19. So think essentially a double single action Glock 19 from CZ, which I believe makes a little bit superior product. CZ, uh, I've never had a problem with, ever. And I think one of the reasons is, is because they break it in from the factory and they really, really dig on reliability, durability. If you look at Max Torture Test, this did one of the best. Uh, part of that reason, I believe, is because it has double strike capability. So you do have a dead round, you can pull the trigger again and it will hit the firing pin for a second time. That's something you can't do with a striker fired pistol. Uh, again, it's a little bit more safe in appendix because you can actually hold your thumb on the hammer and when you're reholstering, you can ensure that you're not gonna put a hole through your dick that you don't want. Um, 
overall, the gun, the reason why I like it the most though, I think, is because I like the double single action, I like CZ, I like the reliability, but it fits my hand, Paul Harrell, it fits my hand so, so well. And every time I grip this gun, it feels like an old friend. And I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but it's a reality. Every time I pull this gun out of the safe every couple of months and I'll do a video with it or I'll do some updated carry drills just to make sure I'm good with it, it's just always on. I remember when we did that uh, video uh, years back on self-defense and I hadn't shot it in like six months. So I was like, man, I hope I don't suck with this. And as soon as I drew it out of the appendix holster, right on target, bang, 50 yards, easy. One of the most shootable guns I've ever had. And a lot of this is because it's a very big uh, grip. It has very low recoil because of the overall slide mass. It's got inverted slide rails there, as you can see. So less reciprocating mass than a standard firearm. But really the frame goes up a lot higher. So it allows me to get a better grip with my big old bear claws. And I can actually cover the entire grip with my hand as opposed to most other uh, striker fired or uh, polymer frame guns, which I can't get a, really a full grip on and I can't use my total uh, recoil control. So overall, it feels like the gun was made for me. And if I was gonna pick a compact or a full-size gun, no question, this would be it. Now, before we get to number one, I'm not gonna do any honorable mentions, but what I am gonna do is talk about my second weapon that I carry real quick and talk about my second channel, which we'll be doing some reviews on. So I wanted to go over three knives that I carry. So I always carry, I always carry a knife. I'm never not carrying a knife. I live out in the country, even if we go on walks at night, mesh shorts, I'm carrying a knife. I just like to have a knife for utility purposes, whether it's a screwdriver, whether it's gonna be a pry bar, whether it's gonna be uh, whatever it's gonna be, opening a can, opening boxes. A knife is one of the most useful tools that you can have, and these are three of my favorites. This is gonna be the K-Bar. Uh, I like this a lot because it's a fixed blade knife. The reason why I carry a knife for self-defense is because I've done a lot of combatives and jiu-jitsu training in my life, and a lot of times limbs get caught up, guns get caught up, and I like to have second options. I like to have a second, third, fourth option if possible, so I often carry my knife and my uh, non-dominant hand, so if my dominant hand is entrapped with a gun, I don't wanna let that gun go to go for my knife and have him have my gun. What I'd like to do is have him two-on-one control my gun while I'm getting him with the other weapon. That's my preferred method, and it's really easy to do that with the K-Bar, because not only does it sit sideways on your belt, so you can easily grab it out, but it does an extraordinary amount of damage for a very small, lightweight package that you wouldn't even notice that you had. You don't have to flip it out or anything like that. It is a little more cumbersome than a folder, but it's a lot more reliable as well. And in the same vein as that thinking, this is the Headhunter Blade, and uh, this is my most expensive knife and one of my most carried knives. I like this a lot, same principle as the K-Bar. However, it's a little bit better, higher quality of a knife, does a lot more damage, bigger uh, overall uh, grip, so it's easier to hold on to, bigger blade, and the sheath is absolutely fantastic. The sheath has this little clip on it, so I can even put it on my basketball shorts when I'm going on a run or something, and I still have some serious capability with really, really lightweight and a very small overall size profile. It also comes with a trainer, so you can do combatives with it as well. I would suggest that because draw practice with a knife can be a little bit more hazardous than with an empty gun. And finally, my favorite knife of all time, this is the Spyderco Endura 4. I have like seven of these and I've carried them consistently over the past 10 years. Unbelievably light, unbelievably thin, four inch blade, very sharp. I have the full flat grind on here, but I often carry a serrated version because I used to be a tree trimmer and uh, the serrated versions care, uh, cut, not, or cut ropes a lot better in case you're stuck or in case you get one uh, locked on a truck. They burn together, that kind of thing. So I like this knife a lot. All these reviews will be on the second channel. There'll be a link below, go check it out. All right, and finally, without further ado, number one. And now this isn't gonna be most people's number one, but it is mine. This is my Glock 43X. Now, holy shit, the wind picked up. My Glock 43X does not have the best capacity. It is not the smallest and lightest gun. It is not the most expensive. It doesn't have the best trigger. It's not the most accurate. But it is the best mix for me of all of those things. Uh, this is not a double stack, which I wish it was. It does have a 10 round capacity plus one. You actually can get the shield mags, the 15 plus one, but I find they're about 50% reliable depending on ammunition type. Uh, so I don't use those uh, for carry. I do use those for range use, but for carry, I use the stock mags. I'm such a stickler for stock mags and stock triggers on carry guns. Uh, the only Glock trigger I would ever carry other than a stock trigger would be a Johnny Glock trigger. I like those a lot and they're just a, basically a polished up stock trigger. So 
I like the stock mags because they're the most reliable. Uh, I like the Glock 43X because I used to carry a 43 all the time. I know as you've seen a few Glocks on the table, it's because I carried Glocks consistently most of my life. So the grip angle and everything feels great. And in my opinion, the 43X has the best grip angle. It has the least uh, ridiculous Glock grip angle. It feels the most like a 1911 grip. That's saying something considering it's still a Glock. And overall, it has a really, really good grip for me. You can see the grip looks like it's made for my hand. It fits absolutely perfectly with no, ex no excess space and my hand can get a perfect grip and I can shoot this gun like a full size gun, even though it's very light and it's very small. With a three inch barrel, I think this gun weighs about 18 ounces and with 10 plus one in the gun, I certainly don't feel unarmed. I can shoot this very fast, very accurately and I can reload very quickly as well. Now I'm not saying that that wouldn't be a detriment and I would like this gun to have 10, 12, 15 rounds like the Shield Plus or like the 365 and eventually they will. Uh, Glock will come out with a double stack version of this. I'm extremely confident confident. They just take three or four years longer than every other manufacturer for whatever reason. Uh, I do have an aftermarket slide on this with the same sights that you will see on my uh, Glock 19 and my Glock 42. The reason for that is I like consistency. I like having the same stuff on each gun so each gun can be run the same. Overall, I'm the biggest fan of this gun just because I can shoot it like a full-size gun and I can carry it all day like I'm carrying uh, just a standard Micro 9 and I really like the size to weight ratio. I wish I didn't like this gun as much as I did, but I really do. And most of the time when I walk out of the house, this is what comes with me. Also, the Glock 43X comes in around the $500 mark as well. I'd really like to hear your guys' favorite carry guns as well. I do a lot of interacting in the comment section, so please go down to the comment section, give me your list of your seven or your three favorite handguns. I'd like to see what people actually pick. It gives me a better example of what's out there in the world and what people are actually using. So go down in the comment section and let me know. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Choke, I'm gonna die. Doing a gun review.